Good morning and welcome. My name is Brenda Austin and I'm on staff at First United Methodist Church in Eaton Rapids, Michigan. Thank you for joining us. Hello to our Foomer family that is growing every day with our online community as that grows. I want to thank everyone who has taken time to reach out and express your appreciation for the online services that I've been putting together. Truly, this is never how I imagined my job to be when I accepted to the call to Foomer, but I am grateful that God has given me the gifts and the technology to be able to reach my Foomer family even in these strange times. We'd like to stay connected with you. You can go to our website at foomer.org or find us on Facebook or view services on YouTube. And it would be helpful if you would leave a comment below, share, like, it just helps us connect even further. You have entered a holy space of worship. Yes, I know that you are not at the church, but wherever you are, God is present. And you might light a candle in your presence just to remind you of that holy space. I have a call to worship for us. Come to worship, people of God, with praises on your lips. Even when we are feeling isolated and fearful, we can glorify the one who holds our hands in our loneliness. Come into the presence of the one who makes holy every place, every space, sacred and holy. Even where we continue to stay in our homes, the doors of grace are flung wide open for us. Come and hear the stories of the one who loves you. In living rooms, on laptops and devices, we will sing our songs and tell our tales of the peace and of the hope which is ours. Hi, we're Bill and Alice. We'll be your greeters this morning. When you come back to church, when we can congregate, we'll have masks ready for you. I remember as a freshman in high school, with, I had a desire to gain more skill in something that I loved, and that was, that was basketball. My father agreed to, to help me out with this. And, and so in time, we poured a large cement slab, and we put a basketball hoop up. And during that very summer, I was up by 7.30 a.m. I would run, I would practice the skills of dribbling and shooting jump shots four hours a day, five days a week. And I truly can say it's amazing what you can do and how you can improve when you put your mind and your heart into it. And I think about our faith, of, of what would happen 
if we got up early or just before bed, we, we read a chapter of scripture each day or, or took a few minutes and we prayed and we meditated to God, what would happen? I think maturity, maturity happens. Let us pray. God, we take these moments to once again recognize who we are and whose we are. We are created, given life, and you said it is good. Your compassion and mercy, God, touch our lives daily. You love us unconditionally, no strings attached. Each day we are held in the palm of your tender, mighty hands. Each and every one of us carry a burden with us. We bring them before you. We lay these burdens at your feet. For those watching who, who grieve due to loss, Lord, have mercy. And for those who are laid off due to present circumstances, God, we ask, Lord, have mercy. For those of us who worry what tomorrow will bring, because anxieties and fears rise, Lord, have mercy. For a country dealing with issues of fairness and prejudice and justice, God, we ask that you would lead us forth in these very important issues. How can we learn from this as your people? God, we are your people. We love and follow you this very day. We pray this in the name of Jesus, he who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. God, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But I say these words. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, Paul said, I have more. But whatever gain I had, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He goes on to say this, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make, make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. For the next several weeks, we're going to be working through a short series on Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul wrote a third of the New Testament. Paul had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that was strong. Today's focus is that of maturity. Think back for a moment, if you will. Is there someone that you knew or that you know who just has a passion or heart for God, who never seemed to get enough of Jesus? I never knew Cindy's grandfather, but stories have been shared about him. Cindy's grandfather was not perfect, none of us are, right? But he had such a passion for God and his desire was that others would come to know Christ personally. Cindy remembers when she and her cousins, when they were young and they were up at the lake, that on Sunday evening, Grandpa Harold would ring that bell. It was an invitation to all the grandkids to go with Grandpa to Sunday evening services. Of course, the grandkids would scatter each having a, a favorite place to hide. But he knew Christ, and he wanted his grandkids to know him as well. Her grandfather from time to time would, would plan trips to see friends or relatives. He, he didn't take the motor home or an automobile. No, he'd hitchhike his way north or south. 
His motivation was to share the gospel as he thumbed his way across the state. For he knew Christ intimately and wanted to share it. Harold had heart problems in his 80s. He kept it a secret. He didn't tell anybody. One day he had a severe heart attack. The paramedics arrived to assist him, to transport him in the ambulance. And as the paramedics feverishly worked on Harold, he began witnessing to them about Jesus Christ, asking if they had a personal relationship with him. Harold died that day. He knew Christ and wanted them to know him as well. Cindy's grandfather was purposeful about his faith. He, knowing Jesus was a high priority. God was central to his life. You know, I watched an oldie but goodie recently, City Slickers with, with Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal was struggling with life. He was on a horse. He asked Curly next to him what the meaning of life was. And do you remember Curly's response? He pointed his finger up. Your finger is the meaning of life, asked Billy. No, one thing. One thing is the meaning of life, responded Curly. Well, what is that one thing, asked Billy. That is for you to find out, said Curly. It is for you to find out. Well, that one thing in Paul's life was to know Christ. It is a passion so perfectly reflected in Philippians 3. Looking at this text, we, we glean several values or principles that help Paul to know Christ more deeply, and it can help us as well. But one thing is for sure, in any season of life, to grow in maturity, we need to make him that one thing as well, to hunger for him, to be determined as Paul. As he says in verse 13, one thing I do, one thing I do. So may we start this series in Philippians by asking God, expressing verbally even, crying from our hearts, a desire to know him more intimately. For I don't think it's a lack of desire to want Christ in our lives. I don't. I just think so many other things, so much stuff gets in the way of this one desire. Know him personally. Second value to faith development is so important. And that is a willingness. That are you and I willing? Are we willing to engage? Are we willing to be a participant? You know, and I have a thought that, that came to me in, in, in this. You know, when I meet with couples for premarital counseling, I, I earnestly say to them, in all seriousness, that marriage is something that you have got to work at. One thing about guys, I, I believe, one thing about males, my being one, we, we like a challenge, that, that we know how to pursue a relationship, you know, to get the girl, and we seek to win. But following the ceremony, too often the pursuit is over, and they no longer pursue the relationship to grow together. So I will say to this couple, Simply being married is not enough. You must want a healthy, growing relationship with your spouse, and that just doesn't automatically happen. You must understand what a good marriage looks like. You, you must make time, communicate, build one another up. And sometimes I'll hear, boy, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, it is. Just as being married isn't enough, being Christian is not enough. For we must press on to know him more fully, as Paul said. We must read his word and pray, meditate, talk with God. It, how important it is to participate in the body in education or worship, to join in, to jump in. We, we must uh, make faith-based choices uh, about day-to-day -day living. That, you know, what we fill our minds with, how we live, how we act, what we give our time and our money to. These are important decisions and choices. I like what C.S. Lewis wrote once. Each time you and I make a choice, we become different in a central part of our being from what we were before. 
Let me say that again. Every time we make a choice, we become different in a central part of our being from what we were before. We see Paul in verses 12 and 13 when he says, I press on, I reach forward, I strain ahead. Now, in, in the Greek text, to press on, I didn't realize this, it is really hunting terminology. In, in hunting season, I, I used to say to myself, as the alarm will go off at 5.15 a.m., you know, Marty, your chances of bagging the big one are much better if you'd get out of bed, if you'd actually go outside. Real wisdom, isn't it? Yeah, impressive, huh? That's what you pay me for, yeah. Paul encourages us to get up, to get going, to strain toward the goal, to a deeper level of intimacy with Christ. Willingness is important. And so, for one, have the desire, that desire to know Christ intimately. Secondly, to get going, to, to press on. Third, in verse 13, Paul says, by the way, it's important to forget what is behind. Forget what happened and reach forward to what lies ahead. And I think Paul is revealing a bit of his life here when he said, forget the past. I believe so. Maybe Paul was struggling to forgive himself for the suffering that he inflicted on others before his conversion. Maybe it just simply made it so difficult to move forward in Christ. And I think this is good and appropriate advice for you and me. That to mature in our faith, that you and I need to forget what is past and to keep our focus on the one thing of knowing Christ fully. Now, the word forget in the scriptures, it's not memory erased. It's not that at all. To forget is no longer being affected by an experience or a memory. No longer letting it affect you. And so is there something in your past that you've been unable to forgive yourself for? We all have things that we're ashamed about in our past. There are regrets. You have them and I do. But it's time for us to accept the hurts, the losses of our past. It's time for you and I to come to grips with what we've done and to accept what has been done to us and just leave them lay, no longer allowing them to control, no longer allowing them to have power over our lives. And it takes time, but it is time to face, to work through them, to work through the, the deep wounds and the hurts and the disappointments, because God wants us to move forward. And it's hard to do so when we got stuff hanging off of us like that. Finally, may we keep our eyes on the goal. There's a goal here, said Paul. He writes, I press on toward the goal, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The prize uh, that Paul strains to win is more of Jesus himself, a relationship, intimacy in heaven. This is what Paul would die for. He would die to gain. And for Paul, this is what life is about, not about things. It, life is not about wealth and position and power, but, but the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ as the one thing in our lives. The one thing the desire to know Christ, the willingness to press forward to know him fully, forgetting the past, not allowing it to affect us, and to keep our eyes on that goal. Would you pray with me? Our God, the one thing is you, that things and stuff satisfy for a season, but they never last, never will. That stuff depreciates, that stuff wears out. But you, O oh God, are eternal, and you bring satisfaction and a deep joy to these lives of ours. So may we lift a finger skyward each day as a reminder of the one thing that brings meaning and purpose and fulfillment, and that is you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Hello, my name is Mark Adam. I am the chair of the Church Council for First United Methodist Church of Eaton Rapids. In this last few weeks, 
our church council has got together to take a look at the online worship services that we have. We agree with church experts that when worship resumes in our sanctuary in the near future, even on a limited basis, it will be important to continue online worship in order for our church to remain vital. We've had many co positive comments pertaining to our online worship services. However, it would be too much to ask of our staff to produce an online service and at the same time prepare for and lead to Sunday ser worship services. We do feel the solution to this is to video our Sunday services for viewing on the internet. Unfortunately, Foomer does not yet have the technology to provide the type of high quality video of a worship service that includes cameras, mixers, controllers, audio, lighting, and etc. The total cost will run between eight and $12,000 above our current budgeted expenditures. The pandemic has made this long-term goal an immediate need, and we are seeking additional funds to purchase this equipment now. If you can help with an additional gift, please mark your gift, Video Equipment. We thank you for prayerfully considering this need for our spiritual funds. My daughter and son-in-law are doing some work on their house right now. They're getting ready for a new arrival in their lives. So I made a commitment to them to help, working alongside them, making every effort uh, on the weekends to to see this project through with them. I do this out of love, of loyalty to family. It just feels good to be a part of their lives. You know, I'm a part of another family as well. And I've made a commitment. My loyalty is strong. It is the family of God for one. And I'm proud to be a part of a Foomer's family as well. And so I give, I give today. I'm a part of something much greater than myself. I have a part to play in God's world. We have several ways to give in the life of this church. Certainly there is cash, there's check, but, but there's online giving as well. And many, many are finding online giving to be convenient for them. And so may we take this time and let us give. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make God's face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.
to fulfill 